Hello! In today's video, I would like to explain and describe the process of how grandmasters calculate. Obviously, it will be my process and how I uh, come to this uh, idea yeah, of finding moves and, and calculating, but I have uh, an impression that this is very similar to what my colleagues are doing. Uh, the position that we will be using is uh, from a game uh, that was played at the uh, recently finished uh, Qatar Masters Open Tournament. And I would like to thank uh, Jacob Ogard, who actually posted this on his Twitter. And uh, hence, I noticed it. It's a very nice uh, puzzle, and which, uh, well, I, I tried to solve. And um, it led me to, to this um, very nice process of solving it. So, uh, to uh, just, uh, I will just now start describing how this whole process took uh, and uh, how it led me to solving the puzzle. The position you see on the board is uh, a position which is in a way um, complex because there are very few pawns on the board and a lot of pieces. And this means that it's all about piece play. That implies a lot of tactics, a lot of attacks, counter-attacks, blows and counter-blows. These positions are not so easy to play uh, because, again, it, they require a lot of uh, tactical awareness. And when you see the position, the first thing uh, you notice is that, okay, white's queen is hanging as black's last move was knight d7 and it... Uh, opened from b6 to d7 and this opened the b file and the queen is attacked now the first thing that would very quickly uh, race through uh, my mind would be that there is this vulnerable diagonal with this knight on f6 so very quickly very very quickly in a split second okay checking knight d7 check okay queen takes b2 knight f8 would lead to the understanding that okay this is not very promising Similarly, other checks, discover checks with the knight, would mean that my queen is just lost. Then the second natural attempt would be to keep the queen on the long diagonal, something like queen a1. Uh, threatening, let's say, knight h5 or knight d7, yeah, with, with mating threats. But then again, I would quickly also see that simply taking the knight and king g8 leads to nothing. So... After very, very quickly seeing these fairly simple things, uh, I just switched my attention to actually understanding what's happening in the position. And uh, uh, when you look at it, you realize that this knight on d7 actually is attacked three times by the both rooks and the knight on f6. On the other hand, my queen is attacked. So logically thinking is that, okay, what if I removed my queen, obviously from the attack, and attack a piece of my opponent, which would basically be a double attack, because the knight would be hanging on d7, and that other piece would be hanging. So that piece naturally is the only undefended piece, which is the rook on c4. So this immediately uh, reduces the number of, of uh, candidate moves that I can play to only two. And the natural move for me at least would be queen e2, attacking the rook and kind of feeling like a consolidatory move of attack of, of defending my my rooks centralizing the queen it's kind of looks like a pretty nice compact move queen e2 so this would be the first move i would notice and it would look promising to me so queen e2 yeah now all of a sudden obviously mentally i would note that there is also an alternative queen a2 but that in a way it looks a bit too weird at first sight yeah attacks the rook it's the same idea but just queen e2 looks more natural, let's say, to me, yeah? Centralizing, putting the queen in the center, defending my rooks, feels cozy, yeah? So the rook is attacked and also the knight is attacked, yeah? Now, what can black do? Well, in such situations when there is a double attack, the principle of defense is that uh, the defending player escapes with one piece and defends the other. Yeah, so the natural defense here would be the move knight b6, getting away from the attack and defending the rook. Yeah, so this would be the first move I would notice, even though the second principle of attack, in a double attack, is to create an, a different type of attack, attack on 
your own, which is stronger than the attack you're facing. So in this case, that would be the move rook h4, which creates a pretty nasty threat of queen h2, king f1, queen h1 mate. So black has two ways to defend. So let's check both. After knight b6, it looks like black got out of trouble, but if we continue the line for one more move and we play the move knight d7, we see that knight b6 is actually easily refuted because the knight is simply overwhelmed. It has to defend the rook on c4, but it also has to defend the, knight on, uh, the d7 square, which is actually a very unpleasant fork, uh, attacking the queen and the rook on f8. And this simple move wins the exchange, because knight d7, queen c4, white is a clear exchange up. This leaves us only to check the move rook h4. So this threat of an h2 is kind of actually quite unpleasant, so there is no time to pick up the knight. Yeah? The natural continuation would be to continue playing forcing moves, attacking moves, and play g3, which is again a double attack. Knight is hanging and the rook is hanging. Now black cannot apply the same process of escaping with one piece and defending the other. And in fact, the best black can do is actually take the knight. And after gh4, looking at this position, I would say, okay, I won the exchange, but I don't quite like this structure here. Yeah? So continuing the line for one more move with a move like, let's say, queen f4. And then thinking about this position for a while, I come to realize that I, I'm losing the pawn, actually. h5, knight h5 happens, and uh, the pawn cannot be defended. So I would lose the pawn. And I would be an exchange up, but with the wrecked structure, weak king, and all pawns on one wing. Eh, my impression wasn't really uh, too great. Obviously, it was not bad. I won material, but the winning chances were... I did not consider them too high, as, as it, it appeared that black's position is just uh, too solid. So I would say, okay, this is, I guess, playable, it, it's okay but doesn't look too great. So now would be the time to say, okay, well, I wish I had something better. I mean, it looks so close, you know, it, it, it just appears that black is hanging by a thread here. And this would be the moment when I would just somewhat reluctantly check the weird looking move queen a2. So the principle is the same, double attack on the rook and the knight. And just that the queen attacks the rook from the other side. I was feeling a bit awkward about this. Yeah, it just looks uh, a bit off to attack the rook from, from a2 and not from e2, which looks really harmonious and centralizing and, and so great. Yeah. But, you know, uh, chess is like, in a way, like mathematics. What works, it works. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. The, the defenses are the same. Yeah, The knight escapes and defends the rook from b6, or the rook goes to h4 and creates this threat on h2. Luckily, knight b6 is refuted in the same way. There is no difference, knight d7. Yeah? Again, overwhelming the knight by this double attack and winning the exchange in exactly the same way. So no difference whatsoever. But what about the other move, rook h4? So there is this threat again. g3 amounts to the same. g3, he takes my... Knight on f6, I take on h4, queen f4, no difference whatsoever. And only here, only here, I notice the difference. You know, uh, and in order to notice, notice the difference, you must be a bit aware yeah, of the actual threat. Now, there is this threat on h2 check, which looks nasty, yeah? But if you compare both options, you realize that in the previous line here, the threat on h2 is actually not just a check, but actually a mate. And the mate happens because the queen on e2 blocks the king's way out. And this is the key to the position. When you compare, okay, here you see that the queen's way out is not blocked. And that on h2 is just a check. Munch the piece and check the checks. Queen h2, king f1, king h1, king e2. The queen is attacked, no more checks. The rook is very useful, controlling the e-file. And if in something like queen b2, okay, it's easy to see that after something like queen b2, 
actually it will be black who gets mated quickly let's say f6 knight f6 and now this just everything dissipates the knight moves discover checkmate on the g7 and so on notice again how the knight is controlling the checks by black and obviously no check on e4 and this is the solution yeah in the position starting position that we we started the odd looking move at first sight queen a2 is actually the winning move uh, in spite of appearances i would say that the hand wants to make the move queen e2 but when you start calculating and you notice the differences and you notice the what works and what not you, are, you have to make the move that actually works and that is the move queen a2 a very nice exercise very nice uh, um, uh, position to train your calculation in a way is a two-step process you realize that against both moves black has two defenses knight b6 and rook h4 against knight b6 there is no difference where the queen goes but the big difference is actually um, after the move rook h4 yeah? and then you understand that the, the, the queen on e2 is actually in the way because it blocks the king's way out it's curious that in the game in fact uh, white played queen e2 so and black in fact did miss the defense with rook h4 and played knight b6 yeah and after knight d7 white won the game it's hard to say uh, why these pretty strong players akshat chandra is actually a grandmaster they missed these um, ideas maybe they were in time trouble it was move 35 but irrelevant of that uh, it's uh, a bit surprising that uh, they missed these subtleties in the position so this is this was the process i it took me to 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 solve uh, the the position the, the exercise and i think it shows you how grandmasters think uh, you see that the process is pretty structured but not as rigid as one uh, may uh, conclude yeah? uh, in order to understand for me uh, that the solution i had to go to the end of one variation which was the move queen e2 which i wanted to make i started the calculation with the move i wanted to make and understand the problems with it and only then the problem being obviously and the impossibility of king e2 in the critical line and only then to understand aha so that is why queen e2 doesn't work check queen a2 make sure it works and in a game play the move that works so i hope you you found this uh, useful yeah uh, it was fun solving this this exercise and again if you like my content you like my videos make sure you subscribe um, and uh, well, I'll thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Take care.